Hi everyone, my name's Laura and this is my channel, So Very Laura. So um, today's video is a Friday Sews and as I'm sure you all know by now, Friday Sews is a hashtag which was uh, created by the lovely Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room. And if you search on that hashtag, you'll find lots and lots of lovely sewing vloggers catching you up on what they've been doing in the world of sewing and a little bit of life in general. So it is actually Friday today. It's late Friday afternoon. I've got lots of lights on, so I'm hoping that um, you'll be able to see me just fine. Fingers crossed. So I wanted to start by just saying thank you very much to all my lovely new subscribers. So um, since I launched my video two weeks ago um, from Lanzarote, and no, I didn't emigrate, sadly, um, and said I was going to change the name of my channel, I have had a little flurry of new subscribers, and I'm now over 750. So that's lovely. We're a growing community, and that makes me really happy. So thank you to everybody who's liked, commented, and subscribed recently. And I promise if I haven't replied to your comment on my latest video or other videos, if you've um, watch those recently. I will do as soon as I can. So um, what have I been up to since I last saw you? Well, came back from holiday the day after I um, released the vlog and I have got some sewing things done, not a huge amount, um, but the first thing that I have done is I have finished my sewing caddy. There you go, I'll show you. Now, I will give you um, a bit of a pattern review, but I'm going to do that later in the video when I've chatted to you about what else I've been up to. But I have now got that finished. So the other thing that I've been working on, um, and I mentioned it to you in my last video, is that having watched the Sew Over It trouser um, drafting course, or most of it while I was on holiday, I've come back and started trying to draft out um, the um, the pattern block to make up my toile for um, the the trousers, and um, I took a deep breath and got my husband to measure me. So there's all my measurements. So it gives you this um, form and it tells you what to add on in terms of ease for each different place. And quite cheeringly, it's all in centimetres and I only know my measurements normally in inches. So I've chosen not to think about the conversion too much. So got my husband to measure me and I've started drawing out the um, pattern onto um, squared paper. So I'll pop a pick up somewhere, probably there, um, just showing you the, um, the block as it goes so far. And... The video on this is really helpful. So um, it has one of the um, Sew Over It people, Becca, who is drawing out the block and she shows you what to do. And there's also some written instructions. So I'll just show you one of the pages, but there's kind of written instructions that says, I don't know if you can see that, it's the camera picking that up. So it says, this is what you do. And then it's got really helpful diagrams, which I've also scribbled all over to make my life easier. And I am, I would say, about a third of the way through doing that. So I'm going to carry on doing that, hopefully, over this weekend. Today's my um, long weekend, so I haven't been at work today, which is really nice. Um, so, yeah, I've got to finish that and then... When you've drawn the block, you have to add your seams on on the fabric before you can cut it out and make it your toile. And in terms of toile fabric, I was thinking, what am I going to use? What am I going to use? Because I've got a pink sheet that I bought in a charity shop, but I didn't want to use it because actually I quite like it and I might make a shirt out of it or something. And then I had a brainwave. So if you've been watching me for a little while, you'll know that I did a collaboration with the lovely Jess from So What If I Sew. And I made a jacket, so I'll pop a little pic of the jacket in here. And I made it from a pair of curtains. And um, I've still got the linings. So I thought that these would be perfect for making up my toile, because I'm sure there's going to be enough to get a toile out of it. And on the video, it suggests you do things like um, mark the grain line in for um, 
the legs and everything so you can see if it's gone skewed or not. So it doesn't matter if I draw all over this. So that's what I'm going to use to make up my toile. So the idea is you make up your toile and then there are videos showing how the toiles have been altered for three different body shapes. So you can look and see if you've got any of the same issues. There is also a PDF printout of um, specific issues that you might have, but I'm not sure it's all encompassing. And I know I mentioned this to you last time. So, for example, it talks about, um, you know, if the grain lines, check the grain lines hanging straight. But on all of the three people, it was. So it didn't say what you would do if it wasn't. And so, yeah, as I said, I've got reservations about it, but I am at the moment trusting the process and I'm going to make my toile and try to adjust it and then hopefully make up the trousers. So two things to mention here. So when I've said I'll try and adjust it, hold that thought because I'm going to come back to that. But one of the other interesting things is once you've got your toile, Becca shows you how to put your adjustments back onto the paper pattern. So that's quite useful, quite interesting. And then she shows you how you can draft either a waistband or a facing to go with the trousers. And then you sew up your, you should technically do a setting twirl, but she shows you how to do the waistband or how to draft the facing so that you can then go on and make up your trousers. And then the very last bit of the video is headed something like congratulations enjoy your trousers and I honestly thought that at that point they would show all the three people who've had their twirls fitted in the final versions of their trousers and they would say look this is what we did we took x out of the leg or we took this out of the crotch or whatever it was and look how much better it looks and there's nothing so I don't actually completely know what these trousers look like. I know that they've got darts in the front, darts in the back, unless you have to take those out to get them to fit. And in one case, they did actually do that. And I know you can have it with a waistband and I know it's got a side zip. I don't actually know what they look like. So I'm thinking, well, OK, I'd like to make these up once I've tried to fit my toile. But I don't want to do it in really expensive fabric. And I was humming and hawing over Black Friday and Rainbow Fabrics had released um, a drop with some tensils in. But they were slight stretch. And I thought, well, I'd like to probably do them first off in a non-stretch fabric just to see. So I didn't buy the fabric. I'll talk more about Black Friday in a minute. But today I had a lucky find. So I went off and got my hair cut this morning. Sorry, that was my 12 fabric hitting the floor. Um, do you go through this when you've just had your hair cut and you're really not sure? And I think it'll be fine, but I think it just kind of, to me, feels like it needs to grow a bit. So it's all fine. But anyway, and then I went for a wander and I went into one of the charity shops. We've got an RSPCA charity shop and I picked up this, which they thought was a curtain, but it isn't. It's, um, I think, a double quilt cover, possibly a king. Um so I've got this and it's, as you can see, it's got this quite pretty flowered pattern on one side, which is probably a bit too pale for me normally, but on the bottom half of my body, that'd be absolutely fine. And then it's got a, the underside is pink. So that would work fine for another toile or yeah, maybe even something, something more. But I thought that I would make up the trousers in this. And this cost me the princely sum of £3.50. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, if it works, I've got a summer pair of trousers. And we know from what I've said before that I don't have summer pairs of trousers. And that's fine. And if it doesn't work or I hate it, then I've not really wasted enormous amounts of money. So £3.50, bargain. So that's that problem solved. OK. So that is the slight pause while I got my toggle tangled on the price tag. So that is um, what I've been doing in terms of sewing since I got back from holiday. So um, I've been trying to draw out the pattern at night and then I finished the sewing caddy last Sunday afternoon. One of the other things I did was I did um, the virtual sewing um, afternoon. 
that was set up by um, the lovely Sam, who is the Queen Girlie Creates, um, and I'll link her channel, and also Christine, Gemini Stitcher, and I'll link her as well. Um, so they were both on, um, we did it on Google Meet, I think, and there were quite a few of us, and we were from all over. So there was somebody from Canada and somebody from the States. Sam's talked about it in her video, so I won't talk about it for too long. But it was really lovely. Um, and I got to meet um, Christine online, so I hadn't met her before. And she very kindly said in her video last week, she gave me a shout out, as did Sam. So thank you, ladies, uh, because I changed my channel name. And she said it was just like, you know, meeting in person and it completely was and everybody was so friendly and so lovely and I sat and mostly finished my sewing caddy and Christine was working on a bag as well so that was quite fun um, and I had a lovely time so that was great so I can really recommend doing um, virtual sewing day if you don't get a chance to go to any because you live too far away or you don't have transport so that was something else that I got up to in the week. And then, of course, I'm sorry, I'm looking down because I've got my notes. We've had Black Friday or Black Friday week or I don't know how long it goes on for in some cases. But what did I buy? How good was I? Was I restrained? Did I buy stacks of fabric? No, dear viewers, I didn't buy any fabric. The only fabric I've bought is what I've just showed you. And that wasn't um, in a Black Friday sale. I did buy some things, but I'm actually quite pleased with myself because I've been quite restrained. And I watched um, Sam Sequin Gurley's video about Black Friday deals. And she's, she said something like, it's only a bargain if you actually want what you're buying, you're going to get it anyway. And so what did I buy? Well, I've already spoken to you about me being a bit worried about the um, so over it pattern drafting and by sheer fluke I think I'd said that I'd said last week that I wish I'd hung on for the Stitch Sisters trouser fitting guide and lo and behold came back from holiday and about three days later um, the Stitch Sisters launched their Black Friday sale and so I bought it so it normally costs £35, but they um, had a sale and I got it for, what did I buy it for? £24.50. So I think because I'm quite a visual learner, I'll probably find that quite useful. But I've been really good and I haven't started watching it because in order for me really to be able to tell you what I think of the So Over It one, I want to see how far I can go just by looking at that. And I don't think it would be fair of me to try and do the toile by looking at the Stitch Sisters one without first trying to do it with the resources that I bought with the Sew Over It course. So we'll see how we go. But if I do get stuck at the toile stage, that is probably when I would start looking at it. Anyway, I got it. And um, one of my lovely viewers had put a comment to say that they got the Stitch Sisters one. And I, I've put comments. If you read my comments, you'd know I'd already got it. Um, and she said it goes into lots of different fittings. So, and it passes the SAM test because it is something that I did already want. And then the only other thing that I've bought is patterns. So I will pop pictures up of these um, because I've only got them in PDF. So I don't have anything to um, show you. So um, I bought two patterns in the itch to stitch sale. And these are the I'm probably going to butcher this pronunciation the Sibiu top um which is a kind of bat wing um top I think Michelle from Sewing Bunny has just reviewed this although I haven't yet watched her video but I'll probably watch it before I sew it and so it's a bat wing top and it's got two views so I'll pop a picture up for you so it can either be a cowl neck sweater with long sleeves or you can do it just as a crew neck t-shirt with three quarter sleeves and you can do colour blocking on it so quite nice to make as a kind of um what's the word you know scrap buster and um it's also got quite a nice thick band on it and it's relatively short and I saw Alex Judge from Alex Judge Sews has just made herself a crop black um sweater 
Uh, and I can't remember what pattern she used, but it looks really nice. And I thought, yeah, actually, I think that pattern would probably work um, if I did it in some of the cable um, sweater knit that I've got. So, yeah, so I got the Cebu or the Cebu. I'm sorry, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. Um, and then the other one I got, which I have been craving for a little while since it first came out, is the Winterthur jacket um sewing pattern so this is like um it's described as a contemporary utility jacket um which is relaxed and you you'll see i'll put pictures in of it i like it because it's got um a fitted waist but the toggles are on the inside so so you can kind of pull them in on the inside to adjust it and it's got a hood and it's got patch pockets on the front um, and it says you can make it in a cotton twill or a water resistant polyester. So I think I'm going to try and make it so that it's a waterproof. And I did actually see some fabrics and waterproof fabric online, but I decided I would wait and shop around a bit um, because I don't think it's something I'm going to get to in the next two or three weeks. So I thought I might hang on, see what's out there. And maybe if my mum doesn't know what to buy me for Christmas, I might suggest that she buys me fabric so that I can sew this up or gives me some money so I can choose some fabric. And um, so that was all I got from Itch to Stitch. And then sew over it, we're doing um, a general Black Friday sale, but they were also offering one pattern a day um, just for 24 hours for five pounds and so I bought one of the last ones that came up and it was the Nomi dress um, which is for um, knit fabrics so again I'll pop the picture up and this comes in two different um, styles on the top so there's a twisted bodies which I probably won't make because I don't like the lower cut version or a crew neck which I do like and then it has got um, like a gathered panel at the waist and then another one um, that falls slightly lower. And you could make it either just at knee length and just have the one tier or with um, a second tier. So you could have that as either a midi or a maxi dress. And I have got a ton of jersey fabric, quite nice jersey fabric. So I'm kind of tossing it whether to use it to make this one or the Estelle dress, but there's a colleague at work who's got a ready-to-wear jersey dress in this kind of style, and she had it on the other day, actually, and I said, I just love that dress, and she said, it's a real workhorse, I can just check it in the wash, and doesn't need ironing, and it's great, and I just thought, I would never have put myself in gathers or thought that they suited me until I made the peony dress by Fabric Godmother, and actually, I did quite like it where the tears are lower down, so, yeah, I'm going to give it a go. Um, so that was my final purchase for Black Friday. So actually, I was pretty good. I got very close to buying a Cricut um, Maker or Explore 3. You know, the, the machines that you can use um, to create vinyl cutouts that you can iron onto T-shirt. I got really close to buying one. And I suspect I've banged on about them so much that I might find that Santa brings me one. I don't know. But I'm feeling my husband's getting really sick of me listening, listening to me going on about them. So I've got very close to doing that. I didn't. So I was pretty restrained, really. So what else did I want to talk to you about? Let's let's talk to you about my sewing caddy and then I'll finish off with a few bits and pieces about what's upcoming. So my sewing caddy, let me just move all my sew over its stuff out of the way, is this one which I've told you about before, the one I'm making. So it is the stylish sewing caddy and it is by Christina Sipurik of Pretty by Hand and as it says it has hardware included so what you get in the pack is this which tells you how to measure out your pieces and then you get these two metal rods um, which actually are totally symmetrical uh, and they go in the top of the bag to create this rigid form and then you have a zip. So 
that's what you get in it. And so it gives you the measurements to make all the different pieces up. Um, so you can cut it directly onto the fabric if you want to. I didn't. I decided that in case I wanted to make it again, I would put these onto my pattern piece, um, pattern drawing fabric, uh, fabric, paper. And so that's what I did. So I've got one of these for each of the various pattern pieces. And as you know from um, my previous videos, if you've watched them, I made it in... Um, these three different, we can only see two at the minute, but I'll show you the third one, I'll show you inside. So um, different pink fabrics, and these came from Higgs and Higgs, and I got a metre of each of them in their remnants for five pounds each. So, um, and I finished it off with a little label, which I thought was quite appropriate for a bag. And it just says, uh, contains cat hair. And that cat looks very like my cat of joy who does like to try and sleep on my chair in my sewing room so if I open it up you will see the third fabric that I've got um, which is just hopefully you can see um, just kind of quite a cute one with sort of um, almost look like little Dutch girls or little dressed up girls in it um, which I thought was quite cute so what's so nice about this one is I picked it because, as I think I said in previous videos, I thought if I get a caddy which is open at the top, I'm just going to drop bits out of it. So that's why I didn't go for something like the catch-all caddy, which I know is really popular. And because it has these metal pieces in, so the metal pieces just sit there, just below the zip. Um, you can you can actually fold it out and it will sort of keep its shape like that. Um, I think it I think it beds in a bit better once it's been going. But there you go. So it holds its shape and then you can keep it open like that, and you can kind of pop all your bits in and then keep it sat open on your desk when you're at sewing socials. And it has these pockets down the side, and so these are all. Um, filled out with um, batting and then so are the sides and the bottom. So as a finished piece, I'm quite pleased with it. Um, it wasn't an amazingly smooth sew, which I will tell you about in a moment, but I think actually it's come out pretty well. Um, I think it's a nice size. I think it will do what I need it to. My plan is probably to buy um, where I don't have more than one of a particular thing I might buy a second one of say you know I might get say for example another pin cushion um I might get another needle case or something like that um so that and, a, and I'll pop a seam ripper in here so I can just leave it with everything in and then when I go to stay with my mum or I go on the sewing day I can just pick the whole thing up and it's already ready so that's the plan so as a finished item I'm really quite pleased with it and you can, if you want, um, buy the zips and the um, hardware without having to buy the pattern again, um, which I think is a good thing. Am I going to make it again? I suspect probably not, because I think probably one is enough. I don't think I'm... And I don't really... I don't think any of my friends would particularly appreciate it necessarily as a makeup bag. I could see it being used as a makeup bag, but anyway. So... Why did I find it tough to sew? Well, principally because the photos in the instructions are so difficult to see. So by way of example, if I show you on the front, you can see that they've chosen um, one pattern for the pocket bit and one pattern for the sides. And then they've got that pattern replicated on the handles, which is the same as I have. Um, but I decided I was going to do my sides the same all the way around. But they've got white sides. But then they decided to show all the pictures on a white table. So, for example, here you can see um, there's your white table. And then these pieces are the side pieces. So they are labelled, but it's really difficult to see what's going on. So I had to do quite a lot of staring at that. And then on this one, you'll see 
they've laid the whole thing out on batting but again you've got the sides and then you've got the batting which is the same color so if only they'd done their sides in something like a darker color but a different pattern it would have been an awful lot easier to see so i spent a fair amount of time squinting doing things like the handles were all right um and putting the zipper in was okay but i did find a sew along on well not sew along but a kind of instruction video which is by um, a lady called, also called Laura, actually, and her channel is So Very Easy, and I'll link you to the video below. And it was much easier to follow because she was actually showing you what to do, but also because her sides were not the same colour as her batting. So, incidentally, you can, but I didn't. You can quilt all this, but I decided I wasn't going to, certainly for a first time so I didn't bother with that I just made it as is um I managed to get the um lining in and everything so that was all fine but I made a real blooper because I made the I made the lining and then it says attach the lining and again the lining is a really similar color so the lining is spotty can you see and this is my fault, because if I'd really looked at the picture properly, I would have realised. But the instructions say, insert the body into the lining with right sides together. Align the side seams, fine. Take the zipper ends inside and pin them in place out of the way of the top edge. And what I did was I didn't pin them between the right side of the lining and the right side of the body which is what you should do so they're kind of on the outside of the body of the bag with the lining on top of them I put them inside the bag so that then you sew around the top edge to attach it all and then you bag it out because you've left a hole in the lining down one side and because nobody is really going to see this except me and of course all of you I just cheated, so when I sewed it up, I did it on the machine rather than hand stitching it. I didn't worry about it. So that's there. So you bag it out, and I bagged it out, and I looked at it, and I thought, there's something wrong here. And I basically wedged the zip between the lining and the body, so when it came out, the zip was stuck inside it. So I had to unpick all the, un all the stitching around the top. And... Because it was really quite stiff in places, going through several layers of fabric, it was really tiny stitches. And um, there was the bit where I'd finished it off over the top. So when I was, um, you know, where the stitching overlapped for the beginning and the end. So it all started fraying. That's the other thing. The seam allowances are only a quarter of an inch. And maybe in hindsight, I would have overlocked it. I didn't because I was worried that it might make it to... Um, what's the word bulky but actually I wish I had I wish I'd just overlocked it or cut it with a slightly wider seam allowance maybe half an inch or something overlocked it and just not worried because I was really bothered that it was going to fray and I still don't know how long it's going to last because of that so I unpicked it all I did have a bit where it frayed a little bit I don't know if I can see it now because I ended up doing a bit of um almost darning on it I can't actually see it now um but what i did was i just ironed on a little bit of interfacing onto the inside of the lining i think it, it's probably just there somewhere but i don't i don't think you can really see it but yeah i was a bit frustrated because fine it does show it on the picture but because everything's the same color i really didn't it was my fault but i really think they could have made it a lot clearer once i got that out of the way um you'll see it's got little tiny tabs on the ends of the zip that was all fine and easy enough to do um and it just finishes it off really nicely and then you have another channel that you've left open in the lining and you simply feed through the wire things and um, then you leave it to kind of get its shape for a day or so I think mine's more or less all right. I might need to fiddle with it slightly. I don't think I've got my side seams on the lining and the outer bit quite true. But it's not bad. 
it'll serve its purpose. So, yes, I'm pleased with it. And I learned an awful lot, I think, um, about how precise you have to be when you're bag making. And that's really good because my husband bought me a bag kit last year for Christmas. So I'll pop a link to that video in down below so you can see it. And I think it was really good for me to do this before I did that because that one's in faux leather and I really don't want to wreck it. So really glad that he did that um, and that I've made this bag. And then the final thing I wanted to tell you was that um, over Christmas, um, Sam Sequin Gurley creates and Agatha from um, um, In Agatha's Cottage have um, put together um, a vlogging tour, um, which is called the Sewing Vlogmas Tour, 24 Days of Christmas it's called. And... Um, what Sam and Agatha did was they've got together um, a few vloggers. I think there's probably 22 or 20 of us because I think um, Sam and Agatha might be doing two days each. I'm not sure. Um, but it's it's for those people who would love to do Vlogmas, but actually probably just don't have enough time to do that. So, as you know, I work full time. I'd love to do Vlogmas, but I'm just not going to have enough sewing to show you. So we're all doing a day each. So I am going to be on the 18th. But I will try and pop up the visual for the first few days. Um, and then you will see me on the 18th talking about something to do um, with sewing over the pre-Christmas period. Uh, and probably a bit of life as well. Um, what else am I going to do? Well, I might be going on a sewing day over the weekend not sure yet if I am then I'm going to cut out some um knit makes tomorrow so that I can just take my overlocker rather than taking my machine um otherwise and and slash or in the week ahead I'm going to try and finish my toile and make some trousers and then I'm going to try and tackle the I am now trousers um which I think I showed you before I'll pop a pick up here and I also want to get on with making the shorts for my husband in that very loud orange fabric because I didn't manage it for a gift to November, but hopefully I'll get them done for him for Christmas. So that's it, really. Um, that's what I've been up to. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you'd like to hear more from me, please do hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything to do it and helps my channel. Also, please, um, if you've liked this video, please do give me a thumbs up as it helps YouTube to know that people are enjoying my content and get it out to more people. And let me know what you're doing. Are you um, getting ready for the run-up to the holiday? Are you still too busy thinking about work? What have you been sewing? Um, are you going to make a sewing caddy? What are you dressmaking? I'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.